other development of Polish historiography is the beginning of the rethinking of the Commonwealth, which initially is frequently called Poland, not the Commonwealth of two peoples, and to emphasize that it was the Commonwealth of at least two nations and later of many nations. You can look at Professor Kaminsky's book with this, this topic, but I think of Professor Gerowski rewriting and, and saying he'd, he'd been opened up to these topics, that he had developed from an Endek family tradition, away from that tradition, and in his vision of the past, he began to think in these ways. The other elements of Polish historiography were, there were a few topics that were taboo or ideologically regulated in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, but Ukrainian topics were one such topic. And there are two reasons for it. One, the contemporary antagonism between Poles and Ukrainians made certain blinders by Polish historians who were otherwise, uh, otherwise good historians. They, these were topics even when they projected into the past. And secondly, there were uh, constraints from a government and ideological, uh, ideological mandates. That's the reason why Professor Wojcik's books on Dziki Polia Wognu, the wild field in fire, in the 1960s, this popular book on the Cossacks, relations of the Commonwealth with the Cossacks, was such an important breakthrough. On a popular level, I mean, it went through three editions, it becomes bestseller we can only dream of today uh, because the Polish intelligent public wanted it, but as well because it was a breakthrough on Ukrainian topics. But I can give you a case of what kind of, what existed in Poland. Scholarship was relatively free, but in the early 1970s, I had to carry out a manuscript from Poland on Hetman Petro Doroshenko and the Commonwealth, a 17th century topic, because Professor Peredenia was, was, had been told that his book could never be published in Poland, and even though he uh, had gone to gymnasium with one of the high communist officials and his wife had appealed to, uh, to him, the answer was there are certain topics that shouldn't be written about. Well, to have a topic in, Polish, in Poland of that time where you couldn't write about it on pseudo-Polish topics of the 17th century was unheard of. So it showed that Ukrainian topics still had a different, uh, a different connotation. And then I think of the, the rather unpleasant debate in Szeglond his, uh, Historyczny over Teresa Kinczewska Henel's book in the 1980s. Uh, this was about a book about national consciousness of the Ukrainian nobility and Cossacks of the 16th and 17th century. Uh, and it is not the issue of the merits. There's much discussion of details of manuscripts and other such things that are worthy of discussion. But it was the virulence of the attack on the book and the fact that a very reputable Polish journal did not have editors who would turn to these rather young scholars uh, who would say, don't do it. Now, what was interesting in this case is Kinczewska Henel, for those of you who know the name Henel, uh, by family relation comes from the Tygodnik Poszekny, the Catholic intelligentsia group of Poland. And the attack came by someone, a young scholar who was a Communist Party member, which was at that point fairly rare of young scholars in history. So it became an ideo ideological fight as well. Now, in contrast, Ukrainian historiography survived by a number of fortuitous circumstances. First of all, that Professor Kripyakevich did not get out in time in 1944. Uh, and so he remained behind in the view, later persecuted, uh, eventually uh, brought back into the scholarly world, and he had great impact on another generation of scholars. And that in the city of Lviv, there developed two counterpolling forces, both dealing with this period. One of Professor Isayevich, Yaroslav Isayevich, who writes wonderful things on culture and the brotherhoods when the short thaw occurs in the late 1960s and 70s. And the other, Professor Dashkevich, who when he comes back from prison camp, gets involved in writing on the Armenians of Lviv in this period and gets support from the Armenians. He is the oppositionist, total dissident historian. Isayevich is, becomes part of the establishment. But they are two European scholars on a, on a general European level working in this city, and they, in many ways, I think, are responsible that there is some continuity of historical tradition. In the city of Kiev, Kiev where the the, the uh, purge is much greater of historians. There are a few people like Shevchenko, Fedor Pavlovich, uh, Butich, who puts out the documents, and they maintain some, some at least level of learning on this period. And then the strange quirk of the city of Dnipropetrovsk. Dnipropetrovsk University, then known as Dnipropetrovsk University in the name of the 300th anniversary of the reunification of Ukraine with Russia. I think that's the longest title of the university. I know no longer. Uh, 
was directly under Moscow University. 